हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ट्यूटोले द गाइड टू लर्नर हियर दिस इज प्रिपोना आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड इन माय लास्ट सेशन ऑन एजुकेशन वी हैड ऑलरेडी डिस्कस सम इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यूज ऑन द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर दैट इज रिसर्च एप्टीट्यूड एंड यू ऑल नो दैट रिसर्च एप्टीट्यूड इज इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट इन यूजीसी नेट एग्जाम एज वेल एज पीएचडी एम फिल एनरोलमेंट एंड इट हेल्प्स टू अपडेट योर सब्जेक्ट रिसर्च आल्सो but today we are going to explain a new chapter according to the uh, ugc net syllabus that is communication okay and it will help uh, aspirants in answering questions on the basics of communication basically so uh, around 5 to 6 questions based on this topic and uh, it finds place in each and every year's question paper so that's why it is one of the most important chapter also okay so if you have missed my previous session so please go and check it once all previous sessions links are available in my first comment and my description box and i hope it will be really a uh, helpful sessions to everyone so please do follow these sessions and please go and check my channel also okay so let's begin the session and move on the next slide and here we can see uh, today's topic what we will discuss today so the first topic that is communication context okay so context of communication the second topic is characteristics of effective communication third and one of the most important topics for this session that is types of communication uh in my last session uh on communication we have discussed some important types of communication and uh, but uh, and today we are also discussing some important types of communication that is written communications verbal non verbal upward downward group mass and public communication and the fourth topic that is uh, some important points on communication also okay uh so uh if uh, you have missed my last session on communication so please uh, go and uh, check it once I, and uh, my previous sessions uh, link on communication is already available uh, my first comment and my description box so please go and check it once and if you have any doubt on it so please feel free to ask uh in my comment section i will reply you positively so let's begin the session this is the first uh, topic for today's session so the topic is communication context so at first we have to know what do you mean by a communication so do you know learner what is the basic meaning of communication we have already discussed it my uh, in my last session so communication basically communication is an exchange of ideas exchange of facts emotions of two or more person so uh, today we will discuss only the communication context so we have already told what is the basic meaning of communication communication is basically the exchange of ideas or facts or emotions uh with two or more persons okay uh so communication now going to the uh this word that is communication context okay so communication context is the environment or ecosystem in which exchange of ideas takes place so context has a higher impact on the meaning of the message only okay so if the receiver uh is able to understand the context then there is a high tendency of him to interpret the correct message correct meaning of message okay but if he is unable to understand the context then it will lead to misinterpretation of the message so context uh, in communication is as important as the content is okay uh there are different dimensions of communication context which are given below so the first point is physical context so physical context basically relates to the place of the communication okay place 
of communication so physical context relates to the place of the communication depending upon the place of communication the way of interaction differs for example the way you interact in the market or a party is different from how you talk to your friend in the library so this is the basic meaning of physical context in communication so i think this is clear so basically physical context implies the place of communication okay uh and the way of uh, interaction the way of communication basically depends on the place of the communication now going to the second point that is social context okay so social context is basically based on the different factors such as the relation between sender and receiver okay their role their status their views their norms of the society for example we can say the interaction between a father and a daughter is different from the interaction between an employee and his boss because a father and daughter's relationship uh, is different from the employee and his boss's relationship and uh their social context uh so the social uh, relationship between father and daughter and employee and boss are totally different so that's why the communication the way of communication the way of interaction basically based on the different factors of society okay such as the relative relationship their status their role etc etc now going to the third point that is temporal so temporal context is one of the most important context of communication communication uh, gets affected by the time at which it takes place okay so there will be changes in communication depending upon the time of the day the energy levels of a person are different at different times of a day this affect the mood and emotions also for example we can say students are more attentive during the first lecture than the last lecture of the day so uh, communication the way of interaction depends on the time of the day also now move on to the fourth point that is the cultural context so culture has implications on values ethics beliefs morals norms etc and these also affect the communication the uh, interaction okay so our interpretation of a word sign or symbol depends upon the cultural background also as culture varies from country to country the interpretation of signs and symbols can also be different at different places also the norms and etiquettes of communication vary from place to place for example in some cultures it is a normal for students to address their teachers by their first name but in others it will be considered offensive so that is the basic differences uh, between culture to culture between different cultures country okay between two different cultures country so it uh, indicates the cultural context of communication and uh, we can see a uh, communication context has a uh, cultural dimension also so now move on to the fifth point that is historical context so our way of communicating also depends upon the past experiences if something has happened earlier as well or happens regularly then we will have some perception about the order of events at this time the historical context becomes important as it helps in knowing the expectations of receiver for example an experienced teacher can tell from the facial expression of the students if they have understood the topic or if she needs to explain it again a student can also judge from his or her previous experiences that if the teacher is looking at him continuously then he must stop whatever else he is doing and focus on the 
class. So historical context uh, is one of the most important context in communication also. Now move on to the last point that is the psychological perspective of communication. So a psychological context basically relates to the extent of formality and friendliness between sender and receiver. Basically extent of formality and the relationship between the sender and receivers, their mood and their emotions. For example, the way a teacher interacts with students while pra praising them for their achievement is different from how she talks at the time of scolding them. Okay, so basically uh, the both uh, way of communication basically differs uh, due to the psychological context of communication. So we can see communication context has different dimensions that is physical, social, temporal, cultural, historical, psychological and I think this is clear to everyone. So now going to the next slide. Second topic for today's session that is characteristics of effective communication. So at first we have to know what do you mean by a effective communication. We have already told what do you mean by a communication but now we are going to explain what is effective communication. So uh, communication involves transfer of information in the form of messages and I think this is clear to everyone and it will be effective if both sender and receiver derive a common meaning of the message. For effective decoding and interpretation of the message, they should have a common language uh, so that uh, they can comprehend the message. So I think this is clear. Uh, what do you mean by uh, effective communications? Because communication will be effective when both sender and receiver derive a common meaning of the message. Okay. So now move on to the some characteristics of effective communication. So the first point is there should be a clarity of message among the sender and receiver. So that means uh, there should be uh, in effective communication there should be a clarity of message. So that's why uh, the sender and receiver derive a common meaning of the message. So that's why it should be clarity of message is one of the most important characteristics of effective communication and it gets affected by the presence of noise in the communication process also because there is no clarity of message among the sender and receiver. Now move on to the second point that is it should be well planned and complete. So effective communication, the mass, the in transfer of information. Uh, so communication basically involves the transfer of information in the form of messages. So message should be well planned and complete uh, in effective communication. So that intended meaning is interpreted interpreted by the receiver. Now move on to the third point. The messages should be simple and short with her no unnecessary information. So there is no and there is no need of unnecessary information in the effective communication because the message should be simple and short and which is one of the most important characteristics of effective communication. Now going to the fourth point. Uh, Effective communication helps to understand the receivers. The sender should have empathy with them. Okay. So empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. So empathy shows the ability to understand and share the feelings of the receiver. Okay. So Effective communication helps to understand the receivers, the sender's empathy with them. Now going to the next point, next characteristics of effective communication. So going to the next slide. And here we can see the fifth point that is 
the sender should modify the message according to the level and needs of the audience okay so obviously uh, effective uh, the messages or communication will be effective if the both sender and receiver derive a common meaning of the message so that's why uh, the sender should modify message according to the level and needs of the audience so that they can understand it properly i think this is clear and this is one of the most important characteristics of effective communication also now going to the last point gestures and other non verbal techniques should be used to facilitate verbal messages and it will help in understanding the context in which message was sent so uh, non verbal uh, techniques non verbal messages is one of the uh, basically it plays an important role in the effective communication also so that's why it is one of the most important characteristics of it so i think this is clear what is the effective communication and what are the characteristics of effective communication so now move on to the next slide today we are uh, discussing uh, five to six types of communication that is written communications verbal communication non verbal communication etc so at first we have to discuss what do you mean by a written communication and verbal communication okay so communication can also be categorized on the basis of how the message is conveyed okay so the communication is of two types uh, so that is uh, written communications and verbal communication and uh, non verbal or gestural communication okay so at first we have to discuss the first category that is written communication if the message is conveyed in text form then it is called written communication i think this is clear to everyone so for example of written communication that is any reports any posters any instructions any orders etc now move on to the second type of communication that is verbal communication when messages can be conveyed orally okay not uh, in text form which is known as verbal communication for example we can say face to face interaction radio broadcast etc and now going to the last uh, sorry third type of communication that is non verbal communication so another way of communic uh, another way of expressing messages uh, is through signs symbol and gestures so this type of communication is known as non verbal communication for example a uh, smile a uh, glance eye movements voice modulation body posture etc so all are the examples of non verbal communication or gestural communication okay so i think this is clear what is written communications what is verbal communications and what is non verbal communication so when uh messages uh is conveyed in text form this is called written communication when messages is conveyed in uh orally so then it is called the verbal communication so non verbal communication is another way of expressing messages is through sign symbol or sign sorry sign uh one minute just a minute learner okay so non verbal communication is another way of expressing messages is through sign symbol and gestures so this is known as non verbal communication okay and we have already told what is the example of the non verbal communication so now move on to the next slide so here we can see two types of communication that is group and mass communication so at first we have to know what do you mean by a group communication okay 
so group communication can be within a group or between groups okay so it can have a small number of people so for example we can say group discussions classroom interactions debates seminars etc and on the other hand the messages are targeted to a large number of person in mass and public communication and this is basically known as mass or public communication so the basic uh, differences between mass communication and uh, public communication is regarding the physical presence of audience so in uh, both are uh, basically uh, related uh, the messages are targeted to a large number of persons but uh, basic differences between physical presence of audience in public communication the audience is in front of the speaker uh, for example we can say like in a concert or a political rally etc but in mass communication the audience is not physically present in front of the speaker but the message or information is conveyed to the receivers through some medium such as tv radio or newspaper so that is the basic differences between mass communication and public communication but mass communication and public communication both are related to the large number of audience okay so i think this is clear what is written verbal and non verbal group and mass and public communication so now going to the next slide and here we can see some points some important points on communication and which is uh, one of the most important because uh, these questions are basically uh, is in uh, mcqs in the neck uh, in the pgc uh, net exam paper okay so the first uh, point first uh, meaning that is study of role of eye contact this is known as oculesis study of use of time this is uh, this is called chronemics study of touch is called haptics study of variation in pitch speed volume and use of pauses to convey meaning that is uh, that implies basically paralinguistic so study of uh, role uh, of eye contact which is oculesis study of use of time which is chronemics study of touch is called haptics and study of variation in pitch speed volume and use of pauses to convey meaning so that is known as paralinguistic i think this is clear uh, what is the characteristics of effective communications and what is called the communication context and uh, different types of communications and uh, last but not the least that is some important points on communications and which is one of the most important thing in this session okay so i think this is clear so learner we are done for the today's session i hope this session will be a very very useful to you if you like my session do not forget to like share and comment and please do some support and subscribe my channel for getting more useful sessions and please press the bell button for getting notifications as soon as possible from my side i will come again with a new exciting session till then stay tuned thank you to all of you happy learning keep commenting 